What's up, fellow Anger Nerds? I'm Bell Barab, and as you can see here, we got Nubatamas again. So this is act the Nubatama deck profiles have actually been probably my most viewed deck profiles on my channel, and a lot of you guys have been like saying, "Hey, Bell Barab, when are you actually going to be updating the deck?" I mean, this is a while ago, but I just like haven't ever gotten around to it. And you've made a lot of suggestions to it, and a lot of them made sense. So I've gone and made several changes to the deck to accommodate first set suggestions. Um, what else do I really need to say? I can't think of anything else to say here because I haven't done like, haven't looked at my new Matabas in a little while since updating the deck. So yeah. So still running two copies of the starter. The reason being is that if you if she gets retired, you have a second copy of her so that you don't run into a scenario where there's no way for you to counter charge whatsoever. So yeah, two copies of the starter is still good. Trigger lineup. I think last time I was running six crit. No, eight crit, four stand. Uh, I've changed that. So you got still four heals. Uh, I like the artwork of this more than the new one, and I've been playing new Batamas before uh, Reckless Rampage came out, so yeah. Four heals. And then, four, uh, eight, twelve crit. Uh, I agree with the mentality uh, that one of the guys on the my previous deck profiles had said, is that if they have less cards in your hand, um, you want to just be able to crit them as much as possible and the higher amount of damage you can put your opponent up to the more scary your deck gets because When you have like two or three cards in your hand and you're at like two damage You can afford to take like additional damage from like a toggle lord or something But all of a sudden when I do the exact same thing and you're at four or five damage all it's suddenly <sighs> Thinking is really hard it suddenly gets a little more scary because the chance of dying dramatically increases and the odds of you winning drastically increase too if you're in that same situation and your opponent has more damage. So the 12 crits uh, get your opponent up to damage quicker because the only trigger that you're hitting other than this is a heal trigger and that's only a quarter of your triggers. And then on top of that when you're finally like reducing your opponent's hand size down to like nothing uh, you kind of want to just be critting them because odds are there, there's times when they're not going to be guarding just because they physically can't. Grid 1's uh, changes I have made. Uh, I think I've, I've dropped the limit break enabler entirely from the deck, so it really doesn't do too much. Uh, running two Fuki. Uh, I kind of want to cut this or up, up this to three now that I'm actually looking at the deck again. But I think I see this card enough. I do have a playset, so I'll probably mix around with ratios. Let me know what you guys think about how many of uh, this guy I should be running. Uh, I kind of want to run more than two. Four Dreadmaster. I still like Dreadmaster. It's good pressure. Like this deck has quite a bit of. Uh, on hit pressure once uh, you get to like your main strategy and whatnot, this guy's just great to, f to facilitate pressure because you have one counter blast. It's like, well, I can use my one counter blast for practically uh, dread. I can use it for dreadmaster. I can use it for. Is dreadmaster really the only target? I totally know what I'm talking about. But yeah, this guy's just more on pressure, and he doesn't go after, and he can uh, activate his skill if it's uh, against a rear guard too. So that's nice. For PG, I've got currently two copies of the unflipper. Uh, Aramis Tabi is still pretty good though because I can still just completely uh, remove it, like almost everything from bind zone if I have an okay hand. Once I get four copies of the end flipper, I intend on just cutting this card completely. Um, it's not nearly as useful as Styraco Lord is in uh, Rexes because Styraco Lord actually does stuff uh, versus this one. Don't get me wrong, is it has an okay skill. It's just a, this deck needs counter blast so badly and has like no way to unflip damage whatsoever. And then three stride enablers. Uh, I'm Currently, as it stands, I don't really feel as though I need four at the moment. I see three frequently enough. Plus, in addition, I can drop like an extra Kuchikiri Kongo or an extra Shiranui if I need to stride. Once again, I apologize if this video quality is... Or not this video quality, but the deck profile quality is not stellar. I haven't done a deck profile in... Oh, God, so long. Uh, grade two's uh, three Miyabi. Um... I opt not to run 4 solely because she's counterblast heavy. I mean, I do have a playset of her, just like I have a playset of Fuki. It's just the thing is that this deck currently doesn't have many ways to unflip damage. If we got, like, a grade 1 or something that made un damage unflipping, like, super easy, like a Soul Blast 2 unflip 2, I'd probably bump her up to 4 and just drop uh, a Gitamaru down to 3. But as it currently stands, you got to manage your uh, counterblast at the moment, and uh, sometimes I'm sitting with her on the field, I'm like, I wish she was a get in a Gitamaru. So that's kind of why I'm not running 4. Uh, I am running for Gitamaru. Reason being is like, 
you do run into some situations where you've got like where you've used the bear or Fuki and you're sitting there and you swing with a good Mario and they let it hit and it's just like, okay, do I get my starter back to my hand or do I make them drop the card? But what I like about this guy is once your your deck gets rolling, once you get into your uh, Shiranui plays and everything, all of a sudden if you have a scenario where it's like, okay, uh, I've got two Agitamarus or I've got an Agitamaru and a Dreadmaster or something, then uh, suddenly it gets into a scenario of Vanguard's going to hit, you don't want to let that hit because it's going to do damage. Uh, these guys you don't want to hit, like, you know, because I play 12 crits. These guys you don't want to hit because you're losing stuff from your bind zone, so all, so all of a sudden... It gets to the point where it's like, okay, I have to guard all of these attacks, and I have very few cards in my hand to guard these attacks. And the idea, or my mentality with Nubatamas, as it, at this very particular moment, I'm not going to say it's always been, but uh, just because I'm talking about it, um, is you want to make this stuff that you bind permanent, in my opinion, for the most part, so that they lose as many cards from their hand as possible, thus reducing the chances of them making a comeback. I think that's what I'm trying to say. I hope I'm correct with that. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, that's kind of why I currently like a four, four Gitamaru. But like I said, if we get like a Soul Blast 2 and Flip 2, or if we get somewhere where it's like, um, if we get like a grade 1 version of the starter, even, like, holy crap, I would be playing uh, four Miyabis just because it's so much easier to unflip or to unflip damage. And then, of course, four copies of the bear because the bear is like fucking amazing. It's, he is. It's really good. Uh, grade 3 is. Uh, you guys are going to be pleasantly surprised. I've finally done it. I've succeeded. Uh, still got four Kujikiri Kongo. Hey, Bushi Road, uh, you got the main pro the main antagonist from the new uh, G anime. How about uh, giving us a good secondary uh, good secondary uh, G uh, grade 3? That'd be nice, please. Thank you. And then four Shiranui, because this thing is the bloody core of the deck. Best card. Probably the best card in the main deck. Um, this guy just negs your opponent so hard. It's great. Because you can, like do stuff. You guys probably have seen enough new Tama deck profiles to know what this guy does, but yeah. So I got the four Shiro Nui's. Uh, interesting story about one of them. Um, I was at my car local shop. Uh, my friend's like, oh, I'll buy uh, six packs of Reckless Rampage. I'm like, yeah, watch you pull a Shiro Nui. He goes and pulls a Shiro Nui. I immediately reach into my wallet, grab, hand him a $20 bill and say, gimme. He gives me the card and takes the $20 bill. I'm like, yes, now I have four. That's my story. Hope you liked it. Uh, moving on to the G-Zone. Still got the one Jura Rukin. Um, again, still same mentality, if you are stuck on Kujikiri Kongo, the cards that come out of uh, your opponent's hand and uh, the card that comes off their field are permanent, so that's really nice. I mean, he's a bit counterblast heavy, but otherwise, I'm pretty pleased with the card itself. Uh, two Sukumorkins. This guy is stupidly good, combined with Shiranui. For everyone who is new to watching these deck profiles or doesn't actually know what the combo is, you stride over Shiranui for Sukumorkin, use his skill first, drop your opponent's hand size down to four, use his skill, drop it down to three, and then you just push as hard as possible to try to kill them off. It's filthy. I love it. But I play Nubatamas, so of course I love it. Um, two good at Surikin. Card that comes out of your opponent's hand if this guy hits is permanent, and again, if you are have enough ways to make them sad face, uh, they're not going to have many cards in their hand to begin with, so you're just reducing their hand even more. Um, I might actually cut uh, Jorurukin for this guy. I really want to play more copies of Gunrakin. I have ordered a second copy, second or third even, um, but what I may do is just cut, cut the amount of copies of the Nubatama G-Guard down to two, and then play more uh, Gunrakin, because he's basically a free version of Sukumorkin except for the field. And then you guys have told me not to cut this guy down, and I'm starting to actually run into situations where his skill is becoming deadly. I'm still playing for Otago Lord. Um, I think the big reason why I didn't want to play four originally was because I was running into situations where it's like, oh, my opponent's got like ten cards in their hand, and I can't really uh, do anything about this. Versus, like, I mean, obviously the choice is just go Sukumorkin plus Shiranui there. But yeah, this guy is a really nasty finisher, and the, what else is there really to say? He's pretty pretty good and then moving on to actually no we got one more card one sea breeze solely because uh this is pretty much outside of the nubatama g guards is pretty much all the nubatama stride stuff that i got and I, they really i don't think have too much more stuff and i'm not running the uh whatever the hell that sure stealth dragon stride is uh, so we're playing one sea breeze because this deck is really gb re reliant and sea breeze kind of you know lets you do gb stuff but the problem is that Great Run Rush is is a thing, and 
I think I'm just gonna become sad face. And then Dismal and Screw, just because I don't know they're good G guards, so that's why. And then I'm running the three Nubatama G guards. Again, probably gonna cut this guy for another Gun Rackin. And then you know if there's new Nubatama stuff coming out, you know that'd be nice. So yeah, that's the updated deck. Again, I apologize if the deck profile was not stellar, but yeah, I haven't done it in a while. And as of usual, or that, as usual, if there's any questions you have or any comments you'd like to make about the deck, please feel free to leave in the comment section below. And I am Babble Rab, and I will talk to you guys later. Peace.